Finally, the most anticipated prosumer drone ever, the DJI Mini 3 Pro, has been officially announced. Loads of video has flooded YouTube showing some extra exciting features of the drone and a new remote controller with a built-in screen. In this video I will show all the official specs of the drone and the controller and I will analyze what kind of user will be the ideal buyer of this model. Let's start with the mysterious object, the new remote controller with a built-in screen. We have seen several photos and drawings in the last month, but we did not know anything about specs. Unlike the DJI RC Pro, the new controller lacks the 5D button and the back button, but it is possible to swipe the screen to the right to return to the previous screen. At the top of the controller, besides the shutters for video and photo, there are two handy scrolling wheels, one for tilting the gimbal up and down, and another for zooming digitally in and out. On the back, there is some storage room for the sticks and two function buttons that can be customized. At the bottom, two USB-C ports and a slot for a micro SD card. The new controller at 385 grams is much lighter than the 680 of the RC Pro, but the size of the screen is the same and the brightness level similar. The antennas are built in. There is a menu to access the brightness of the display, the volume, to take screenshots and to connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It is possible to record the screen if a memory card is inserted and this is a deal maker for me. I can't wait to get one. There is a built-in memory of 8GB but unlike the RC Pro it is not possible to access apps other than DJI Fly. In the specs DJI does not specify the luminosity value but it is apparently 700 nits, slightly lower than the 1000 nits of the RC Pro. We don't know yet if this controller will be compatible with other DJI drones, but it looks really great and I have the feeling that many users who bought the extremely expensive RC Pro will not be too happy. By watching the DJI introductory movie, we can see that the main features put forward by the manufacturer are the ultralight design below 249 grams. The HDR video mode apparently based upon a dual ISO capability while shooting footage. The ability to tilt the gimbal upwards to 60 degree which opens up a new space for creative cinematic shots. The true vertical video and photo mode, which should become quite popular for users who are into Instagram, TikTok or YouTube shorts. The three obstacle sensors used for Active Track 4.0. and the excellent APAS 4.0 system for finding the way through obstacles. Master shots. The zoom modes. The longer battery life. And hyperlapse. Finally, the higher frame rate for slow motion, 60 frames per second at 4K and 120 at 1080p. We immediately noticed that this new ultralight model is packed with features, practically the same as the R2S, plus a few more like vertical video and the extended upward tilt of the gimbal. The Mini 3 Pro is available for pre-order and should be shipped in about 10 days. The official full list of specs is now ready and available on DJI website. We already knew most of the specs from leaks and rumors, but a few more functionality have been disclosed. The sensor size is confirmed at 1 over 1.3 inches or 0.77 inches 
much bigger than the 0.43 of the Mini 2, but just a touch smaller than one of its main contender, the Hotel Nano Plus. The aperture is fixed at f1.7. The video resolution is 4K with a frame rate up to 60 frames per second. There is a normal pre-cooked mode, as well as a flutter cine-like mode for serious post-processing, even though it is in 8-bit color mode instead of 10 bits, like in the R2S and Mavic 3. The maximum video bitrate is a whopping 150 Mbps, therefore the compression of the file is very low, for better results in post-processing. When shooting video, by default an HDR mode is applied, taking advantage of the dual ISO. The video transmission system is AucuSync 3, the same as in bigger models. Besides master shot and quick shots, the Mini 3 offers the same intelligent modes as the R2S, active track, spotlight and point of interest, grouped under the name of focus track. This is a big plus compared to the Nano Plus, as these models are extremely useful. When tracking, the excellent APAS 4 is available. For photography, the resolution is 12 megapixel, but with the ability to split each pixel into smaller ones for a sort of 48 megapixels, like in the Nano Plus. The photo shooting modes are the same as in the R2S and include time shot, automatic exposure bracketing, panorama and hyperlapses. It will be very interesting to try the panorama mode with the upward tilting gimbal for better reproduction of the sky in sphere mode, or by using the camera in vertical mode. I can't wait to test the hyperlapse mode with the special long-lasting battery. There is a digital zoom mode of up to two times at 4K, which can be useful for users encoding and 1080p for social media, but it's not very interesting for 4K videography as there is a loss of resolution. The announced battery life is 34 minutes, a few minutes longer than in the Mini 2. It is possible to purchase a more powerful battery, which brings the flying time to an incredible 47 minutes. But in this case, the weight of the aircraft will exceed the 250 gram threshold. The announced speed and wind resistance are exactly the same as the Mini 2, and this is a bit surprising. With the new aerodynamic shape of the fuselage, the more powerful battery and the bigger propellers, I was expecting an improvement in both departments. Sub 250 gram drones are generally associated with entry models. This is certainly not the case for the Mini 3. DJI is very good at positioning its lineup in a clever way, and the word Pro added to this model is really meaningful. The Mini 3 Pro is a lightweight powerhouse aimed at serious enthusiasts and professionals who might also own something like a Mavic 3 and would use the Mini 3 Pro for urban shooting in light winds or for vertical shooting for social media. I believe that the Mini 2 or Mini SE will be kept in the catalog as the entry model for beginner and casual users. A question that I get asked a lot is, should I buy the Mini 3 or go for the R2S? It is an excellent question, as the two models offer very similar functionalities and the selling prices are not too far away. The first thing to take into account is the wind conditions. For a user living in Iceland, Chicago or other very windy areas, I would suggest the R2S or the Mavic 3. On the other hand, for a user living in an area of low winds and doing a good deal of urban shooting, the Mini 3 is an excellent choice. Besides wind resistance, the main advantage of the R2S are the larger 1-inch sensor, the 5.4K video resolution, 10-bit color for the two flat profile HLG and D-Log, and the ability to shoot real 20 megapixel photos. On the other hand, the Mini 3 offers vertical shooting, a feature that can be very important for several users, 
and also more relaxed regulations, especially for urban flying, at least in Europe. Obviously, I'm not going to comment on the quality of footage and still images, as I have not tried the Mini 3 Pro yet. By clicking on this link, you can watch a video about the only real contender of the Mini 3, the Hotel Nano Plus. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.